Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in on you. Uh, this is an informal, uh, yet highly relevant and important uh, video that I'm doing. Uh, instead of doing a long write-up this year, I'm going to do it in video form uh, because I really want to truly express myself without having to try to squeeze and do all the things I do when I write. I want to just talk from the heart. Uh, first and foremost, I want to do a major love shout out to my mother, Linda Mays, my biological mother, Linda Mays. Uh, I love you. Uh, to my mother uh, who has passed away, uh, who adopted and reared me, my great grandmother, Ernest Lee Wallace. Again, I love, hey, what's going on, Pastor Foster? Uh, I love and miss you. Uh, I wanted to do those shout outs to my moms um, and there's no shortage of love for either of those two uh, but I want to talk about my wife uh, I want to talk about the greatest blessing I believe that a man can have um, and for so many different reasons and uh, you know I champion our women so much that a lot of uh, these new age thinking men uh, have some have referred to me as simps of course never in my face to my face but uh, social media tends to make people brave uh, beyond measure uh, I kind of posted uh, jokingly I posted uh, earlier this week that you know some of you young cats before you disrespect some of our old heads you might want to do a background check we're still able to do what we used to do and you know, but it, it is what it is. Um, I used to post a lot about my wife and how much I loved her and how awesome I thought she was. And my wife came to me. And for the people who are wondering, he doesn't post anymore. What's going on? It's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with what's going on. We're actually at our peak. We're doing better now than we've ever done before uh, as a relationship in so many areas of our lives. Uh, we've taken on a lot. Um, and so we're constantly busy. But the reason that I actually stopped posting so much is my wife came to me and says, every time you post, I, my spirit gets heavy. There's so much of a spiritual assault taking place. And there are so many places that it can come from because there's so many people out there that don't really mean you well. Uh, and I'm talking to everyone. And so I had to learn that while I felt a certain way, it wasn't for everybody to know. And that was kind of hard for me because you, you, you fight all your life to have this person in your life and you finally get through all the stuff you've gone through to get to this point and you feel like you can't celebrate it. Well, you can, you just have to celebrate it with the people who are truly authentically for you. And you have to know who those people are. You have to know who's with you because they are simply there for you. You have to know who's with you because they're there because y'all have common interests. You have to know who's there because you have common enemies. Some are there because you're the enemy and they're keeping you close and they're plotting your demise. You have to be truly aware of that. But I just wanted to stop by and talk about this beautiful woman that I have the honor to call my wife. And she'll probably get on me because she came to me and said, baby, stop posting so much. She didn't ask me to stop posting. She said, stop posting so much. Because every time after that, there's this heavy onslaught of spiritual assaults and attacks and in, in, in an attempt to cover her, uh, which is a part of my responsibility, my divine responsibility. Uh, people talk so much about men being providers, but they forget the part about men being spiritual coverings. See, a part of being the head, a part of being the lead is being a spiritual covering, a place that everyone that you're responsible for can come in and come underneath you and feel safe. And we don't do that. But that's enough talking about me. My wife has been a phenomenal mother. And this is what this is about Mother's Day, right? We're not, I'm not going to be able to do this on Mother's Day because I'm kidnapping her and taking some the younger kids and getting away. And I'm going to make that day about her so I'm not going to be on social media. And, you know, so that, that, a brother, brother Quentin, Chad Foster, you don't know what that means to me. There are not many I have a great deal of respect for you or one. And uh, I, 
I have a general respect for everybody until they give me a reason not to, but there are certain people I admire uh, with a level of respect and you're one. So that means a lot to me. Um, but my wife, you know, and our backgrounds are completely different. I came from a loving home that nurtured me, protected me. I, I didn't know my father and my mother wasn't in a motherly role in my life. She was only 15 years older than me. Uh, she had me when she was 15. She wasn't in a motherly role. I was reared from the age of nine months by my great grandparents. My grandmother's parents reared me. But I grew up in a protected environment. Yes, that was extreme discipline, which I think bordered or entered into what I would now call abuse. But they protected me. They provided for me. I never knew what it meant to have lights turned off, no food in the house. None of that stuff was ever an issue. They took care of me. So I grew up that way. My wife grew up the entire opposite way. And I can share this because it's in her book, uh, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughter. She's very candid. She's very transparent. She talks about everything she's had to go through. And she does it from a point of showing to show people just how powerful a relationship with God can be. And how through the actions taken through faith. I'm not talking about this superficial stuff we love to talk about in the church on a religious level. I'm talking about true, natural, engaged relationship with God to where my whole thing is in this God thing. And I don't want to get too much off of her because it's her. But this whole thing with God with me. And this is where I've had some 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 disruptions with the church uh, as I had a role in leadership. And this thing, is, my thing is you can't talk about faith in its real, true, authentic nature and be powerless. And I see so much powerlessness in people who claim the faith. And it bothers me. I, I, I've counseled pastors and, and they're ready to throw in the towel because they don't understand it. It's because we're teaching it, but we're teaching it in a highly passive manner. We're teaching it as if, if you, if you just stay right here and don't do this, don't do that, and just do this, you'll be okay. I'm not trying to be okay. I'm trying to live out the fulfillment, the fulfillment of my design. I'm trying to live life at the height of what I was designed to be. I'm trying to be able to report to the designer at the end of this thing and say, I showed up. And I, 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 I did that. I came, I saw, I conquered, I went out and I fulfilled my design. I lived life at the level of my design. I am gladly reporting with my final report. That's why I say all the time I live life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I don't want to have to show up and say, well, I left that. It's in the grave. I left this. It's in the grave. I left that. It's in the grave. Unfulfilled. No. And so that's this thing. So, But when I look at my wife, I see a revelation, an expression of faith that's hard to see because she grew up in an abusive home. She grew up in a place where she didn't feel safe, something I never knew. She grew up in a place by the time of five, she was molested and again. And then uh, in her teenage years, raped twice. It's in the book. I'm not sharing anything about this beautiful woman that she hasn't already told the world in this book. I mean, if you are a woman and if you've been through some things, you need to read that book. I'm talking about healing. I'm talking about the power of God to come into the worst situation and turn it around and really heal. You know, my, uh, my grandmother told me something when I was nine years old. She said, son, stop trying to prove to people who are. Let prove to people who you are. Let the life that you live speak for you. And I, I've tried to do that ever since. But when I look at my wife, that's what she's done without even any intent on trying to prove anything to anyone. She simply said she was going to be and become. And she let the life that she lived speak for her. She let the life she had. She had kids. For whatever reasons, the fathers weren't there. This isn't an attack on anybody or trying to belittle anybody. This is just talking about her truth. And then when she sought people to help her outside of the farm, they weren't there. She literally was a mother out there on an island rearing these babies. And she went to work, sometimes holding down three jobs, paying for daycare, picking them up, taking them home, cooking, cleaning, doing everything, putting them to bed, sometimes having to put them to bed and let the, the older kids watch them while she go to a night job. I'm talking three jobs. I'm talking about this woman did everything, but at the same time, she was healing herself. She was getting through something. She was going through something. And she sits up now 
and she still has that same love for those kids. She sits up now and she still has this, this, this unbelievable love for other women and other girls. She's worked with girls who are in the Texas penal system uh, in T TYC. She's gone in uh, weeks at a time, weeks at a time for years, counseling and speaking and nurturing these babies, some who were, 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 were abused, some who were rescued from sex trafficking organizations. I mean, and she's able to speak them from, to, from a place of authenticity and love and care and concern. Uh, she's got this uh, YouTube channel, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten, which is associated with uh, the truth that comes from the book, but it's about her sharing her love and advice and, and I mean the link to that's in there too. The, the the link to the book. If you want to read if you want to be blessed, uh and, and and sometimes men need to understand what our women go through because as a human behavior expert, as a psychologist, I can tell you that a large percentage of our black women have experienced at some level what my wife has experienced. I work with them on a daily basis. I've worked with them. It, it became at some point in, in the early 2000s, it, it got to a point where I called another black male psychologist and I said, is it just, is it, is it, is it, is this a reality or am I just the one black psychologist who happens to get all of the black women who have been molested as a child? And he told me, nah, bro, it's an issue. It's been slept up, swept under the rug for so long that nobody is talking about it and nobody wants to acknowledge it. And so I started to do research and I found out that on the liberal end of this, we're talking 60 plus percent of our women have been through this. On the conservative end, where we start to say, okay, that's some inflated numbers uh, done by blah, blah, blah. The conservative end is still close to 50%, it's 40 something percent. And so now we're looking at a situation where there are women that need to heal. And that's what I love about my wife. You know, she's a wife, she's, she, she's a business owner, she's doing all these things, but she has a passion to love on other women that I don't hardly see among us anymore. Our women have become so catty our women have become so combative with one another that they are there's there's no no camaraderie there's no collectiveness there's no tightness there's no unity everybody is out trying to defend their little piece of space in this world as an individual and you have lost the sight of the power of collectivism and unity and synergy and that is something she's fighting so heavily for you know i look at this woman and I have nothing but adoration for her because I know what she comes from. I know what she fought through. I know what she's had to, to endure and to see her right here. And, and, and the reason that I'm doing this is because we too often want to talk about this after the fact. First of all, I think she's going to outlive me. So uh, that won't be the case for me. But rarely do we take the time to really acknowledge the beauty in a person beyond what we are getting out of them. You know, she's not a mother figure to me. I'm her husband, I'm her leader, but I watch her and I watch the sacrifices that she's made before I came. I've watched the sacrifices she's made since I've been here. I watch how I have to literally reel her in from just going all out to her detriment because that's just how much of a loving person she is. And I just want this out there in the universe that life through the best they had at my baby. She took it, inhaled it. Then she exhaled and she said, I'm built for this. And she went out after it and she is constantly going. I watch her battle and I cover her as much as I possibly can. And I watch her battle and I watch her wake up every morning and answer the bell. I don't know if you'll watch this baby, but if you do, I love you. For every mother out there that has gone the extra mile and probably feels underappreciated, you are worthy of great honor and appreciation. And I recognize you and acknowledge you this morning. We're in a time and place where we need to heal. 
We need to release all of the toxicity that has permeated our bodies, our brains, our spirits, and our minds for literally years and has inhibited us from being the unbelievable and exceptional, extraordinary people we were designed to be. God didn't design anybody for mediocrity. He didn't design anybody to be average. He designed, when I think about God and his relationship with, with man, and put the, put the religion down for a minute and think about God's relationship with man. And while I'm using Gideon, you can use anybody you want to, but I use Gideon, why? Because Gideon had began to believe what the world had put in front of him. He was hiding in the wine press, threshing wheat because of his fear of the Midianites. And, and through a theophany, God appears and says, mighty man of valor, and Gideon's like, who are you talking to? Gideon said, let me explain something to you. Because obviously you can't be God. Because if he's God, you know that I am of the weakest and the lessest clan in, 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 in the village. And then I am the lessest, the least of the clan. But the beautiful thing about it is God referred to Gideon not as he had saw himself not as he had believed and had behaved, but as he was designed. And that's what I want us to start doing. Start referring to people by their design and not their situation and not their circumstance. And that's something that my wife constantly speaks on and speaks to. And I just wanted to take this time out. I know I may have been all over the place, but I tend to follow my spirit when I speak. I tend to speak because when my spirit moves me, it's speaking to someone. And I may not ever get to meet that person who needed to hear it, but I know it landed where it needed to land. And on that note, I'm going to wish my wife, my blessing, my favor, a very happy Mother's Day as, or as she has made it this week. It is Mother's Day week. I don't know how that happens or what it's about, but she's made a Mother's Day week for mothers to celebrate themselves up until Mother's Day. And so I'm, I'm supporting that. Do your Mother's Day thing, Mother's Day week thing or whatever, but I got you on Mother's Day and the kids are going to be there and we're going to celebrate you uh, in, 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 in totality. But I just had to take some time to really and truly touch down and mention this because I don't think we celebrate people enough. And it's a shame that I can't really celebrate my wife the way I want to because she comes under spiritual attack. And I feel it. I feel it, too. But I've just gotten to a point where I expect to be exalted, assaulted spiritually because I speak truth. And truth tends to disrupt people who want to live lies. And so I understand that. And so I expect things to come back at me, but I have to protect my, my baby. And so uh, it may be a while before I get on here and talk about her again, but please know that I'm loving her with every ounce of me and I'm, I'm covering her with every piece of strength I have. And that's my heart and that's my joy. Um, you guys have an unbelievable day. Thank you for dropping in. I hope there is something that I have said that blessed you. Again, if you haven't gotten Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters and you want to learn about the power of overcoming trauma through a relationship with God, you need to get that book. If you want to have something ongoing by my wife coming at you on a weekly basis, you need to click that link and subscribe to her channel. On that note, I'm going to get off here and do what I do. I got a channel waiting on me to come bring them something. So I got to get off of here and get on that. Um, again, I love all of you guys. Take care of yourself, and I'm out of here.